Festivals, theaters, conferences, planes, boats, rental cars, road and road and then some more road and schools. I've been doing a lot of high school gigs lately. Sometimes, like I said, I wonder if maybe I get the opportunity to see the insides and the guts of more high schools and shake hands with more students and stumble through more uncomfortable introductions to more principals and cover more territory, span more provinces and borders and districts and countries even than almost anyone working in our education system today. Sure, it's quick and I'm there and then gone in a little under two hours mostly, but still. You get a sense of a place, a taste of it, anyway. And more and more I am sampling the smorgasbord of our school system and where it best serves our students and where it is still falling apart. I do a one hour show designed to fit in between bells, 45 minutes or so of storytelling followed by a 10 to 15 minute question and answer and hopefully discussion period. <laughs> I don't say the word queer or gay or lesbian during this show, nor do I talk about sexuality or sex at all. I just tell stories. Stories about myself, my little sister, and my two little cousins, Dan and Christopher. Christopher was an awkward, clumsy kid who was mercilessly teased and picked on all throughout school, right from the beginning. Anyway, I tell stories about the four of us, stuff we used to do when we were young, stupid, broke-ass, bored, small-town kid stuff. I tell one story about how Christopher had gigantic feet for his age, size 13 feet, in fact, by the time he was eight years old, <laughs> I tell a story about how we all got secondhand roller skates this one summer, 1981. All of us except Christopher, who could not cram his gigantic clown like feet into the cool <laughs> roller skates, so we had to buy a most crappy old fashioned kind that you had to buckle up over your own shoes. Remember those? <laughs> and anyway, long story short, he wipes out and he craps his pants. <laughs> And of course, all of us, secretly or not secretly, love a good poop your pants story. <laughs> it's a classic, I believe, the great leveler. We all pooped our pants when we were babies and then accidentally here and there throughout our lives. <laughs> and of course, every single one of us is going to shit ourselves again at some point on our way out of this world. Unless it happens very quickly. And we never saw it coming at all. So in this way, pooping yourself is one of those things that makes us all human. Together. <laughs> Needless to say, this story goes over well with the kids, and I achieve my primary objective, which is to get them all to identify somehow with my clumsy and unlucky little cousin, to invest in him somehow, to care about him, to sympathize. Hopefully we laugh together. Then I sit back and I wait for the question, which almost always comes. Almost every show, some kid puts up their hand and asks me, where's Christopher now? Where is Christopher now? I tell them that I know what they want me to tell them. I tell them I really wish I could tell them what I know they want to hear. I say how much I wish I could tell them that my clumsy little cousin Christopher grew into his gigantic feet and eventually became a tall and handsome man who would one day marry a tall and handsome woman and they would go on to have two tall handsome children and now he lives happily in a suburb somewhere and he works as his, at his successful and fulfilling job in the IT industry and that they have a little brown dog and a little white picket fence but I can't. And then I tell them I can't tell them that because Christopher died on Christmas Eve in his 21st year of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And that is why I come into high schools. Because I want them all to know that someone cares about them. And that they have a right to access their public, public, public education without threat of physical, emotional, or spiritual violence. Then we talk about bullying and what we can all do to work towards building a safe and respectful learning environment for each and every one of them. Last fall I was in St. John's, Newfoundland for a storytelling <coughs> festival.
This festival has historically asked all of their performers to do a few high school gigs while they're in town. But a couple of weeks before I arrived, the festival director called me up to inform me that six St. John's schools had turned my show down, even though the festival was going to be paying my fee, and it would have cost these schools absolutely nothing to bring me in. And the festival director was kind of embarrassed about the whole situation. She said this had never happened to her before with any of her other storytellers. Said the principals were concerned that I might upset certain parents that perhaps I was not appropriate somehow and, uh, you know, for a high school environment. So I only did two school shows in St. John's last November, the only two schools that would have me, which, funny enough, were the Catholic school, ironically, <laughs> and an alternative school for kids who had dropped out of the public school system altogether, many of whom had been bullied right out of their education and or battled learning disabilities or other challenges. Both of those shows were amazing, full of good discussions, intelligent questions. It was a great way to spend a Thursday in St. John's, Newfoundland. But that very same Thursday night in St. John's, the unthinkable happened. One of the students from a school that had turned down my anti-bullying show took his own life. And I didn't know him. Obviously, I never got a chance to meet him. I don't know if he was gay or even if he was bullied, and now I will never know. But obviously, something was going on for him. There's no way to know if a one-hour storytelling show and discussion might have changed this terrible outcome for this boy and his family and his friends and fellow students who will all carry his death now for the rest of their lives. And how do I know this? Because I carry my cousins. It's right here, with me right now. I don't know that my show would have changed anything, no way to know that. But what really haunts me is that I don't know that it wouldn't have helped him either, right? I send my compassion and love out to his family and classmates. And I ask you, what will it take exactly for school administrations to realize that providing a safe school environment for all is more important than catering to the bigotries of the few?